Hello, and thanks for tuning in. In this series titled, The Parable of the Rich Man and Lazarus, we will primarily be discussing the 15th and 16th chapters of Luke. It's recommended that you thoroughly read those chapters before beginning the videos in order to acquaint yourself better with our area of study. Many scriptures will be displayed during this video, and so you may need to occasionally pause to read them all. At Luke 16, 19 through 31, Jesus tells a very interesting parable. It's commonly known as the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Some today say this was not really a parable, but was a telling of actual events because Abraham and a man called Lazarus were named. In no other recorded parable does Jesus use proper names. Yet, this story is nested nicely within several other parables in such a way that makes it difficult to think it was not a parable. In the 15th chapter of Luke, preceding the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Jesus gave the following three parables, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son. The theme of these three parables was the finding, saving, or retrieving of something or someone that had gotten lost or who had gone astray. In the case of the lost sheep, the principal character was a man who owned a hundred sheep and was able to find the one sheep that had wandered away after leaving the ninety-nine sheep behind to go searching. In the case of the lost coin, the principal character was a woman who had ten silver coins, but who had lost one coin somewhere in her apparently messy house. After completely sweeping clean her house, she was able to find the coin. Finally, in the case of the prodigal son, the principal character was a father who welcomed his wayward son back home after he had left with his share of inheritance and had squandered it foolishly. What is most important to note in Luke chapter 15 is the audience present for these parables. Luke 15, 1 through 3 tells us, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So we see, tax collectors and those who were called sinners first approached Jesus to hear his teachings. It so happened that, at the same time, there were Pharisees and scribes present as well. We also notice that what caused Jesus to give these three parables was the complaint by the Pharisees and scribes that Jesus was associating with those who were considered dirty, undesirable, and outcast by the Jewish religious system. Before continuing, we must first discuss why the Jewish religious leadership looked so poorly upon tax collectors. We must also find out who those people were who were called sinners. In Jesus' day, the Roman Empire ruled much of the known civilized world. In the eyes of a devout, religious Jew, the Romans were paganistic polytheists who soiled the land of Israel with its idolatry. During Jesus' time, the Roman government and the Jewish religious system maintained a fragile peace. So long as the Jewish people refrained from causing disorder or mounting a rebellion, the Roman government was happy to allow them some bit of autonomy regarding their religious practices. Ironically, the high priest was placed in a religious and political position of authority over the Jewish people and was answerable to the Roman government. Should the fragile peace be broken by a rogue Jewish group who incited rebellion, or should the Jewish leadership fail to maintain the order of the general Jewish public, it was rightly assumed that Rome would quickly and decisively intervene with its armies to restore order in a harsh way. If this happened, the Jewish religious leadership would lose its power position and authority. With Israel being under Roman authority, taxes were certainly required to be paid. To collect taxes, Rome needed people to collect those taxes. Who better to collect taxes from the Jewish population than fellow Jews? A tax collector in Jesus' day would not only collect taxes, but would be in a unique position to overtax the people and take the excess for themselves. Much as lawyers are viewed today, Tax collectors in Jesus' day were viewed as being generally dishonest and corrupt. Add to this, Jewish tax collectors were viewed as being traitorous and unfaithful to their national heritage, as they served a foreign power that was currently suppressing the independence of the Israelite people. It's no wonder tax collectors were viewed poorly by not only the religious leadership of Israel, but also likely by most of the population. But what about those who were called sinners? In the Old Testament, the term sinner meant wicked and was the opposite of righteous. 
For example, at Psalm 1, 5 and 6 it says, Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Just as we would use the word sinner today to mean one who does not follow the commandments of God and who, for example, lives in sexual immorality, who is a thief, or one who is dishonest. So did the word sinner mean in Jesus' day? There was one exception in the case of Jesus' parables in the 15th chapter of Luke, however. While within the hearing of both tax collectors and sinners, Jesus told three parables which described the redemption of an animal, a sheep, an object, a coin, and a person, the prodigal son. If we read Jesus' words at Mark 2.16 and 17, we can understand his position regarding the tax collectors and those who were called sinners. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. In the case of the tax collectors and sinners, in the 15th chapter of Luke, they had come to listen to Jesus' teaching sincerely and genuinely. In the passage we just read, there was no indication that Jesus was complicit with their lifestyle or choices in behavior. Rather, he saw this as a chance for them to repent and change their lives in response to his teaching. They could become righteous, should they hear and follow Christ. The Pharisees and scribes, however, had long ago written them off and would not allow for change or a return to normal Jewish society. As the religious and political leadership in Israel, the Pharisees could excommunicate anyone they chose from Jewish society by calling them sinners. While many people had done things that justified this title when it came to allowing repentance and a change of heart, the Pharisees were simply unwilling to forgive. Once someone was cast out of Jewish society and given the title of sinner, they had no expectation of being welcomed back. No longer would they be welcome to enter the temple or participate in Jewish religious traditions. As outcasts and sinners, all other Jews in good standing would shun them for fear of being outcast themselves and called sinners. They would struggle to find employment. Many would be required to enter the service of the Roman Empire to make a living. No doubt, many tax collectors were first named sinners then, of necessity, became tax collectors to make a living. The pressure placed upon the Jewish people to shun and avoid doing any business with sinners and tax collectors is evident by their complaint to Jesus at Luke 15 too. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. With all of this in mind, the three parables of Luke chapter 15 become more relevant. Those listening to Jesus included sinners, tax collectors, and the Pharisees. With no change in setting or listeners present, Jesus proceeds to tell the parable of the dishonest manager in the 16th chapter. At Luke 16, 1 through 13, however, the parable was spoken to Jesus' disciples rather than to the crowd or the Pharisees. The parable, however, was certainly meant for the benefit of the Pharisees. In the parable of the dishonest manager, a rich man summoned one of his managers who had been alleged to be wasting his possessions. His employer now required an accounting of his management and would, no doubt, discover his dishonesty and terminate his employment. But before he presented himself to his employer, the dishonest manager decided to write off or reduce the debts of those who owed his employer to ingratiate himself with them. As he knew he would be terminated from his employment and said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. Luke 16.3 His hope was that, when he fell on hard times, those whose debts he wrote off would help him. When the dishonest manager finally gave an account, Jesus said, The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. Luke 16, 8 and 9. But was this advice Jesus was giving to his followers? 
Are we to do the same and make friends by means of unrighteous wealth? Obviously not. Rather than teaching what believers should do, in this parable Jesus was mocking the Pharisees. Jesus finishes the parable by saying, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Luke 16.13 We know that the Pharisees understood this parable was directed to them by their response in the next verse. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. Luke 16.14 The Pharisees were lovers of money. As lovers of money and lovers of being held in high esteem by others, they would use their positions to oppress the poor, swindle sincere worshippers, and pervert the law of Moses for their own gain. This is why Jesus then told them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since then the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone forces his way into it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one dot of the law to become void. Luke 16, 15-17 After speaking some about divorce and remarriage, which was another aspect the Pharisees had perverted and changed, Jesus proceeds to tell the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. We must approach this parable now with everything in mind we've already discussed. Jesus tells four parables starting in the 15th chapter of Luke and in the first half of the 16th chapter. The parable of the lost sheep, lost coin, prodigal son, and dishonest manager. During this entire conversation those present were tax collectors, sinners, Jesus' disciples, and the Pharisees. We now come to the parable of most interest. Thanks for watching part one of our discussion, The Parable of the Rich Man and Lazarus. Please check back for part two.